Hey art friend, this tutorial will show you how to turn your black and white sketch into color image in 4 steps. My name is Matthias and for the past 10 years I've been a concept artist and art director. This video is different and longer, very much on purpose, and it will be best if you give me your attention for entire video. Because I think I will show you something completely new. I checked many other video tutorials about this subject and I haven't seen anyone doing this. So I appreciate if you stick around until the end so you can understand why I'm so excited about it. Most of us know that values do a heavy lifting in painting. Values are without a question the most important aspects of painting, but it's hard to juggle between color, composition, shapes and perspective. That's why we usually make black and white sketch to set up a composition and value structure. And then we color our grayscale drawing or we paint from scratch in color. But the problem with these approaches is we either start again and lose time, or the value sketch looks muddy and not vibrant enough. With this method, you will not only retain your great composition, but also your colors will be rich and saturated. No matter if you are painting characters or environments, the method will be the same, and can be applied to any software that has layers and blending modes. I watch multiple videos on YouTube, and in most cases they will show the same three techniques over and over. The reason is, it's hard to do this because of the complex nature of color. The most people struggle to progress because they use either color layer modes, gradient maps or hue saturation to color their drawing. Or they start drawing in color from scratch, which is in some cases a waste of time if you went far with your black and white drawing. But no worries, I will give you a perfect workflow that will keep you your value drawing intact and give you vibrant color with natural complexity of shades. Okay, step one. It's hard for me to juggle multiple things at the same time. Color value, composition, perspective, it's too much to handle all at once. That's why it's good to split your painting into chunks. For each element, make a new layer and use an appropriate value base color. If you are painting from reference, the base will be an average value of object. If you paint from imagination, well, this is a subject for another video. Now add a new layer with multiply blending mode and paint your shadows. It's important stage because we want a complete control over our image. You can either paint the shadow layer for each object or for the whole scene. Step two, when people move from grayscale to color, they tend to use layer modes that shift the values making them darker or lighter. So all the hard work you put into composition could be jeopardized by those layers. Like here, I'm using multiply layer mode to glaze some colors. And as you can see, we get some color information but we also darken or lighten an image. So to avoid that, we create a reference from our sketch. So we can use it as a benchmark to check if we didn't deviate too much from our original composition. Select all layers and group them together. Duplicate group and name it sketch. And now we move to the next step. Step three. The problem with coloring with hue, saturation, gradient maps or color layer modes is that the color are in place, but you might notice that it still looks a bit dull. It's not the best approach and the reason is it will be tinted but without changing the hue of color or saturation. That creates this feeling of color gel filter. That's why we split the base and the shadow so we can color them separately. This is going to be our first step to create color version of our sketch. Click on the value base layer, use hue saturation adjustment or lock transparency and fill the layer with color of your choice. Then go to shadow layer and do the same thing. With this one, I recommend using hue saturation because it's easier to adjust since the layer is on multiply mode. It's hard for me to give you exact recipes for every situation, but what works for me in most cases is to have a shadow layer with a different temperature from the base layer. So if your base layer is in warm color, the shadow would be cooler. It creates a natural contrast. If you are painting a landscape, color of the shadow layer is usually a color of the sky. Repeat this step to every object of your scene. If this is helpful so far, I would love it if you would book that like button, so this video can spread to more people. When you are painting, it's also nice to check your values from time to time. Depending on software and hardware that you are using, I will show you three ways to check your values. This one is my favorite when I'm painting with Photoshop because it's the most accurate. All you need to do is go to Menu, View, Proof Setup, Device to Simulate and Grade 20% and press OK. Now the keyboard shortcut is Ctrl Y will preview the most accurate value check. If you are not Photoshop user, 
There is a solution for you. Make a new layer and fill it with solid black color. Change the blending mode to saturation or, or color. As you can see, it's not the best. It darkens the image a bit. But if you are using Procreate or Clip Studio Paint, I think it's good enough. The last option works similarly to color layer, but you can view them on desktop. So for example, when you want to study other artworks in black and white. It's just quicker to hit shortcut than moving the image to Photoshop. If you are a Windows user, type color filters in start menu and click grayscale. Then using Control Windows C, you can turn grayscale on and off. It's not that easy to access for Mac user, but I left the manual in the description. Okay, so you saw the video clips in the background of me painting my parking lot and using this exact technique. So if you find this video useful and you want to support my effort, check out my Gumroad for some bonus footage. Let's push this color sketch to the next level using temperature shifts. Temperature shift creates this color vibration that everyone looks for and it's not possible with using standard coloring techniques. Pick a color from your base layer and move your RGB sliders a bit to the left and right. This is super important. A huge advantage of doing this way is that your value stays the same but your color temperature shifts dramatically. Start painting and move strokes along the form to create a sense of directionality and surface imperfection. Since we split these two, you can add some color shifts in the shadow layer using the same technique. I also like to add more saturation and color shifts on the edges between light and shadow. It feels like the colors pop more when I'm doing this. So as you can see, we create this rich variation within a shape because the color and the base start mixing with the shadows, create this cascade of colors. It should be fine, but once again, check with your value sketch if you didn't deviate too much from your composition. Adjust the level if necessary. So to recap all of that, keep value base and shadow on separate layer for more control, group and duplicate your black and white sketch, treat it as an anchor for great composition, Use RGB sliders for temperature shifts. Add more temperature contrast on edge of light and shadow. Use black and white to see if your values are right. The first five people that apply this technique in their work and create a black and white sketch and color finish drawing will receive a draw over critic for free on my Discord channel. Also, make sure to subscribe so you can see me live streaming and failing on stuff that I was painting easily five years ago, but now I can't because there are not enough hours in a day to practice everything. Okay, I wish you a great day and till the next one. Bye!